In this video, brought to you by Monument Hobbies, check till the end of the video to get 10% off your first order, it's the 2020 Tabletop Minions Awards. Twenty twenty is, you know, it had its ups and downs. I don't know that it'll be a particularly memorable year in the annals of annals or whatever. Um, you know, maybe I don't know. We'll see. But uh, you know, I wanted to do another one of these year-end kind of retrospective. Here's some things that some of them came out in twenty twenty, some of them didn't, but I didn't discover them till twenty twenty. Uh, kind of videos where I explain, here's some things maybe in the world of tabletop wargaming that you should take a look at, pay attention to, maybe try out, that kind of stuff. So I got dressed up in my best tuxedo and uh, came here to do such a thing. And I hope if you're watching this on the day that it comes out that you, you know, have a Merry Christmas if you're into that kind of thing. Otherwise, Happy Holidays or I hope you have a day off, you know, one of the two or anything like that. We're going to lead off with a line of paints uh, that I have been using a pretty good amount this year, uh, both in my own kind of personal work and also on stuff that I've been doing on Twitch. And that is stuff from a company called Turbo Dork, which I think is a relatively great name. Easy to remember, Lord knows. Um, they have a cool logo. Uh, that's also, you know, always a bonus. But also the materials that they make, I think, are pretty top notch. The majority of what they focus on, the Turbo Dork stuff, if you haven't seen me, mess with it on Twitch or anything like that. It is a what they call a turbo shifting paint. It's a, it's a, it's the, the colors, they will change as you move the model. I don't want to put the words colors and shift too close together for a bunch of sundry reasons, but it, these paints have in a, come in a ton of different colors. They go on great. They go on, frankly, uh, nearly as good with a brush as they do with an airbrush. I have done both airbrush and also paintbrush uh, with the paints. With the, the paintbrush, you wanna do the smart thing about kind of putting your first coat so that the strokes go maybe, let's say, north-south and then east-west on the second coat so that it sort of evens out. I originally learned that, actually, um, from Chris Bellew from over at um, Way of the Brush. But it's a good idea and it works well. I did it on the Tyranid specifically. Didn't do it as much on my um, Nurgle Puscoil Blight Lord. Blight King, Blight, Blight something. I didn't do it so much on his wings, but I still used the airbrush and on my, or sorry, the paintbrush on my night haunts, it was all airbrush. So um, it comes in tons and tons of different color shifting, whoops, uh, colors. And also um, they've got some new ones now that you can put it over different undercoats, either black, white, or black and white Zenithal, and they will definitely change the way the paints look. Each bottle of paints has a little thing on it that says, put this over white, put this over black or whatever, so you don't ever have to try to you know, remember, well, which color should I use with this color as the undercoat? It's all right there on the bottle. And um, you can start to find it in more and more stores, at least nationwide in the United States. I'm not sure about overseas, but you can also order from their website from what I understand. And um, they also have a pretty growing line of just colored metallics, which don't shift in any way. They're just metallics, but in different cool colors. So you might wanna check those out as well. Anyway, Turbo Dork first choice for the TMA 2020s. So the order that these come in the TMAs, the Tabletop Minions Awards, doesn't actually matter. It's not, you know, first place, second place, anything like that. So just keep that in mind. I may re-edit what I'm filming now so they're in different orders and even surprise myself. It'll be great. The next uh, uh, item though on the list is a game called Zona Alpha from Osprey Games, written by Patrick Todorov. And um, it is, I've been talking about it a bunch on the Every Other Sunday show that I do on YouTube. I've mentioned it from time to time on Twitch. I think I've even mentioned it several times on this, uh, rec uh, you know, this year YouTube channel. And uh, it is a miniatures agnostic skirmish game. What that means is that you can use whatever miniatures you want. They don't make a miniatures line. They're just making the rules and selling them to you. Um, you can get it in print or in PDF as well. And it's kind of modern day, like it's not too sci-fi, maybe a little bit. Um, and it's based off of, frankly, uh, a book written by a couple of brothers from Russia back in the 70s called Roadside Picnic. That also spawned a movie called Stalker, a video game called Stalker, which you may have seen. Another video game kind of called the Metro series, Metro 2033, Metro Exodus, stuff like that. And uh, the concept is, is that aliens came at some point, landed, and did alien stuff, and then, you know, 
jetted. And uh, they left behind a bunch of stuff. And some of it's really cool, and some of it will kill you outright. Just, you're dead. But some of it will make you float into the sky and eventually the stratosphere, and you can't stop. It, there's all kinds of weird little bits and bobs, and we don't understand them. But people want them because, you know, people. And uh, so the governments have made these exclusion zones around the areas where the aliens landed, and now you are trying to, in your group, your little war band, trying to sneak in and get treasures, whatever kind of strange and wondrous alien artifacts, and get out so you can make money. And so you play against another group, but sometimes you can play with that group. There's also co-op. There's also solo now. Both co-op and solo are available as a free download to uh, you know help your solo playing needs in this time of pandemic. And it's just really fun because it's a whole new area of terrain for me to mess with, personally, reasons why I like it. It allows me to do stuff that's a little bit more modern or current, um, but I can also find all kinds of weird and different models to use in it because there are different factions in the game. It's not just military versus people who are trying to steal things. There's also cultists, there's scientists, there's all kinds of different things. I've been working on some cultists actually just recently uh, from... Um, Anvil Industry, a great place to actually get models if you're looking for specific, uh, you know, Zona Alpha type stuff. They don't make it stuff specifically for them, but there's a lot of stuff that fits the bill. But there's a lot of companies out there who are making things, modern military contractor type folks and things like that. That stuff can work really well with the game. It's a, it's a well done rule set. It gives you a lot of wiggle room. It's not for people who are like, I need every single last thing completely nailed down in the rules. There are it's a great rule set, but it does give you the chance for some interpretation. It's more about uh, having a good time and telling a cool story than it is about trying to play in a, a competitive style game. So if you're looking for competitive rules, th these aren't those. But otherwise, it's a very cool game, and I dig it, and uh, you, you should check it out if you get the chance. This next one is kind of a person, a YouTube channel, a Twitter feed, uh, a Patreon, that kind of stuff. And it is a... Uh, Artist Empire. Artist, um, artists Empire. Uh, look for them on Twitter. Look for them on YouTube. I'll put some links down below. And Patreon as well. What this person's doing, and I don't know them. I've just been, actually my friend Vince Venturella turned me on to them just a couple of months ago. And I've been just absorbing everything that's been coming out of the, the different uh, you know feeds uh, since. And I've been really impressed. They're taking pictures that people send in of their painted models. I painted this model, and I've sent it to you, uh, Artist's Empire. And now Artist's Empire draws over the top of it and does cool photoshoppery and lighting effects and smoke and flames and all kinds of cool stuff like that to make your model look amazing now. And like not just on a white background or you know, on a black background, but now there's all kinds of extra cool stuff and effects and, and things like that going on. The fact, as a person myself who is a modeler and a painter, uh, also a photographer, and also a Photoshop nerd for a quarter of a century. Frankly, I've been using Photoshop professionally for literally a quarter of a century. I'm amazed that I didn't see this coming a little bit. Um, you know, so frequently you see people take pictures of their miniatures and then it's just on that kind of background. Maybe it's that white to blue fade or maybe it's that weird speckly kind of stuff or whatever. And that's pretty much it. And you go, that's pretty cool. But when you really pop a miniature with this kind of uh, treatment, it looks amazing. So you should definitely go follow them on Twitter. Uh, they got a YouTube channel where you get to see the stuff happening actually in motion and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, if you're so inclined, go check the Patreon as well. I've been really impressed with the work. I really like it. And I definitely am thinking about getting some stuff potentially done myself, hopefully, uh, by, by them. And it's coming soon with some of my cool models, hopefully, that will look even cooler when they're done. Gaps are sometimes the bane of my existence. Specifically, Night Haunts. Got that big zippered on the back basically when you put the two pieces together and I've talked about I've done the Scooby-Doo joke I don't know how many times but uh, they are tough to fill and I have made videos about it I made a video about the real you know actual use for liquid green stuff years and years and years ago turns out not a great gap filler good for making cool textures lousy for gap filling and there's other stuff out there there's different plastic putties from Vallejo and AK Interactive and uh, all kinds of different companies. There's uh, Milliput, people tell me about. Um, Sprue Goo, which is you take this liquid, um, this very liquid um, plastic cement, and you just keep cutting up pieces of sprue and putting it in there, and then you just put it, anyway. The best stuff that I've found so far actually was uh, told to me from a friend of mine uh, named Genuine Vision. 
um, over on Twitch. You should definitely check out Jan over there. Uh, a lovely Irish lad uh, making amazing paint jobs and having a good time on Twitch. And uh, he told me about this stuff called Bondic, which is another uh, winner of this year's TMAs. Bondic is a resin that is UV reactive. So it comes, you buy it online. I'll put a link down below to you can, where you can get it on Amazon. Um, and it uh, comes in a little tube and it comes with a little flashlight, which is a UV flashlight. And you put the stuff that you need in there to fill the, it's got a little tiny needly kind of like applicator and you squirt it into the gap. And then you take the little flashlight, you turn it on there and you shine it on there for, they say three to five seconds. I'm gonna go longer because that's, that's, that's what I do. Um, and it hardens. It hardens as a clear resin very quickly, uh, as it turns out. Does not, I don't know about three to five seconds, but easily 10 seconds, boom, it's hard. And uh, I'm not a scientist, but I think the fact that it's not evaporating to, that makes it so it doesn't shrink like pretty much every other liquid sort of putty that I use to get into the gaps. I put it in there, I shine the light on there, and it hardens. And then, honestly, I have to go back and actually and sand a little bit if I put too much in there because it doesn't sink into the gap like every other thing I've tried using. So uh, if you're interested, check this stuff out. It's also good for just attaching parts together, not like as a glue specifically, but for really weird spots where you're like, I don't know how I'm gonna glue this properly. I could see it working well for that. But for gap filling, yeah, I would definitely give it a try. And um, it, 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 yeah, it's, it's, it comes highly recommended from both me and from Genuine Vision. So definitely check that out. It's called Bondic. It's a UV reactive resin and you can get it on uh, Amazon. I'm not a big historical uh, war gamer. I'm just not. Um, and it, it is frankly hard to get into historical war gaming. There are a lot of different rule sets. There are a lot of different models. There are a lot of games. They're very model agnostic, miniature agnostic, which for m many people is great. I enjoy a good game system that is not attached specifically to models so I can use kind of whatever I want. But for a lot of people, that's almost like, I want to say too much freedom, you know what I mean? So, um, and, and with historical games specifically, it's a big issue. And so some folks from a YouTube channel and a club and a group called Little Wars TV uh, sat down and decided that they wanted to try to fix that problem. And what they did is they sat down and they wrote a rule set called Raven Feast. So it's all kind of Viking era kind of stuff. And it is a free PDF that you can get from Little Wars. And they also are going to be, once we get to have conventions again, they'll be, I don't know if they'll be handing out the game for free or if it's going to be something you buy at a very, very low price if you want to get it in print. But for right now, you can get it as a PDF and download and start playing it. And they have not just the rule set in there, which is a great little rule set. It seems, I mean, honestly, it, it comes across as a very kind of elegant and not too crazy rule set, but also not too simplistic. You know what I mean? Um, it, but they also have information in there as well about modeling and painting and even making terrain and stuff like that so that you can get not just here's a rule set and I want you to figure the rest out of it. You know, Instead, they're trying to give you at least a starting place for the whole package. Here's the rule set. Here's how you can paint some models. Here's how you can build some stuff. And it's free. Knock yourself out. And so I like seeing that kind of stuff specifically in the overall kind of community. And I'm really glad that Little Wars TV did that. It just came out at the beginning of December, so it's relatively new. So go and check it out if you're interested in kind of Viking area, uh, Viking era stuff, and you can download it and you can start building yourself some Vikings, make some cool longhouses and all that kind of stuff, and uh, start playing some games. One more thing, which is a, a rule set, but also a lot more. Years and years ago, I heard about something called one page rules. And one page rules originally was basically. You want to play 40K, but you don't want to play 40K. You love the models, but it's just the book is so thick and the whole thing. So they made uh, something called One Page Rules, and it was 40K on literally one piece of paper, both sides. And they have, over the years, expanded and expanded to the point now where they have fantasy, they also have uh, sci-fi, they have both army scale and also skirmish size for both of those games. They have even ship combat, like spaceships. They've got tons and tons of different stuff on, on the website if you go to One Page Rules. They have all this stuff available, and not only do they have all of that available with good art, good layout, all that kind of stuff, ready to download, but it's also, 
it's interesting because they've also decided to start picking up some of the other places where things have been left behind as far as like, yeah, we made this rule set, um, you know, and in some situations, uh, the community really wants to sit down and build and you can definitely say, well, we'll use this and we'll use that. And they have army lists that are compatible with, let's say, many different types of well-known games out there, 40K, Age of Sigmar. But they also have models that are two-dimensional that you can print out on cardstock and cut them out and put them on little standees. And you could use those if you don't have access to um, models. Or if you want to play a game and you don't want to build and paint, you got that access. On the other hand, they're also now releasing a huge line of STL files for your 3D printer. So they are cranking out really nice looking models that work with their games. You can also use them in other games, whatever that. So they're the kind of the whole package, everything from the game design through, you know, 2D stuff. Even if you just want to proxy with some 2D stuff, you can get it from them, cut the stuff out, print it out, you know, all that jazz. Or you can go to full blown 3D, or you can even just use the models you already have. You have all this access to you in both fantasy, sci-fi, skirmish, army, I would definitely tell you to check it out. If you're looking for something that you want to be a little bit different, something that's, that's maybe easier to convince your friends to get into, rather than saying, hey, you should buy this book and this book, and then you should buy these models and do all that kind of stuff. It's easier to kind of get your friends into things when you're like, here, download this stuff. Maybe follow this Patreon. If you want to start printing some cool stuff with that 3D printer you don't know what to do with, it's a great system. So there you have it. That's the 2020 Tabletop Minions Awards. And again, this is not in any order. Um, if you didn't get some sort of award, it's not because I thought that your stuff was bad. I potentially didn't hear of it, or I just potentially thought that these things were something that other people should learn more about. It's not so much a ranking system or anything like that. It's really more of a me trying to let the people in this community know about things that I think are cool that they should check out. And it's kind of a, a year-end sort of situation as well. So I always try to do it on the last Friday of the year, which this year, you know, is Christmas. Uh, so uh, I hope that you've survived so far uh, in 2020. Uh, if you're watching this, I'm assuming you have. Maybe it's been great. Maybe it's been not. Um, but I hope that 2021 is better for you and your family and your friends and, uh, frankly, all of us. I hope that it's better for the industry that we enjoy. Um, it's been, in certain areas, actually pretty good for the industry. A lot of paint sales, a lot of hobby sales, stuff like that. Other parts of the industry, smaller companies that make a lot of their money at conventions, not doing so hot, obviously. Um, conventions themselves, not doing so hot. So, um, I'd love to say I'll see you at, uh, Adepticon 2021, but... It's not gonna happen. Um, maybe Gen Con? I don't know. Uh, it's, it's a very good question. But hopefully, uh, sooner or later, we'll be able to get back together and start doing some more playing. Until then, I hope that you maybe check out some of these things and maybe start building some models, maybe start filling some gaps, maybe start making things where the color will change depending on how you look at your crazy bug monsters or whatever. And uh, I hope that you uh, have a better year next year than this year, even if you had a pretty good one this year. And um, thanks for watching. Are you happy with your acrylic paints? Back in 2019, I was at a convention and I saw a booth from a company called Monument Hobbies and I bought a little bottle of white paint from them just to try it out. Finding a good white paint is difficult. They're either sometimes too chalky or they're too thin. And I bought this bottle of white paint and I took it home and I started using it and I fell in love with that particular paint from that particular color in that set. And then 2020 comes along and I bought the entire line. Uh, now they're a new company, Monument Hobbies, uh, with their Pro Acryl line. So it's not a huge line, don't get me wrong. Uh, but still, I bought all the paints that they had available and I'm telling you about them today. This is not a paid endorsement technically, but it is kind of an ad because I've got an affiliate link with them, which can save you 10% off. Monument Hobbies currently makes probably my favorite opaque paint, the Pro Acryl line. I use it constantly. If you've been watching me on Twitch, which you should, um, I've been using it pretty much whenever I have an opaque paint that I need to lay down. I love the white, as I mentioned, uh, the coal black. I, they've all got matte surfaces, so I really enjoy that. It's really easy to put more paint on the top of them if needs be for layering and things like that. They're very fluid, yet still quite opaque. That's the thing that impresses me the most about those paints is that they're not chalky ever. They're very fluid, yet still very frequently kind of a one coat cover in a lot of situations. And that's what I really love about the paints. So I'm a big fan. And I'm also a big fan of their brushes as well. 
um, the bombwicks, as they're called, from Monument Hobbies. They come in two different styles of synthetic. Uh, I generally like the debt cords, but they also have another brand called, or a line called Artillery, which are a little bit more utilitarian synthetics. And then they also have a brand of natural hair uh, sable brushes, which are called igniters. And uh, they have these bundles where you can save, if you buy eight paints from their line, you get 10% off, 16 gets you 12% off, and 24 or more gets you 15% off. And with the brushes, it is four brushes gets you 10% off, five will get you 15, and six plus will get you 20% off the normal price of brushes. And because you're a viewer of this here very channel, you can use offer code tabletop minions at checkout of your first order and get an ex another 10% off the top of all that. And so, you know, you, you might want to take a look at it. Again, monumenthobbies.com. Look at the uh, paints, the Pro Acryl. Look at the brushes. They also are now are starting to do primers and also even glue. So there's a lot of options there. Um, made right here in the United States. And um, the, uh, like I said, the bundle prices, you can get that discount plus also 10% off of that. And it's, a, like I said, an affiliate deal, so I make a little bit of money off of it as well. You help to support the channel, which I appreciate. So check out Monument Hobbies, probably my favorite, easily my favorite um, normal kind of opaque paints these days and the brushes that I've been using almost exclusively for the last several months. Again, check me out on Twitch and you'll see what I mean. Um, thank you again to Monument Hobbies for giving this 10% off to the community and uh, thank you for helping to support the channel.